So this is a, a project which is focused on indigenous vulnerability and adaptation to the health impacts of climate change. And we're really interested in looking at remote indigenous communities in three different parts of the world. One is a high income region, which is um, Arctic Canada, or the Inuit of Arctic Canada, a middle income region, um, which are uh, two different indigenous groups in the Peruvian Amazon, and a low income region, so the Batwa Pygmies of southwestern Uganda. And we're really interested in finding out how these communities are interacting with their environments now or how it is that their environments affect their health. And why we want to know that is to find out how their health might change in the future as their environments change under projections of climate change. One of the techniques we used for our pilot research is called PhotoVoice. And PhotoVoice is a really, really nice way of working with people to get them to tell us what's important to them. And photo voice essentially is breaking away from the idea of sitting down and asking somebody, how will climate change affect your health? Because that's really a question that doesn't resonate with somebody in an indigenous community in a remote area who has many other priorities. So with photo voice, we sit down, we give people cameras, and we teach them for a very short period how to use the cameras and simply ask them, take these cameras for a few days or a few hours and tell us how the environment is important to your health. And the picture creates um, really a, a nice trigger for an entire group to have a discussion on what matters to them. For example, in the Arctic, people have taken pictures of um, vodka bottles, and that's created a discussion of alcoholism and how spending money on alcohol might constrain people's ability to spend money on food. Now you might say, why is that relevant to climate change? Well, what we really want to know is not just how environment and climate change affect people's health, but what are all the other things that are affecting people's health that we need to understand in order to understand how climate change will add an extra layer to that. So we expected in Peru and the Arctic and Uganda they would have entirely different health priorities. In fact, they didn't. They had very similar health priorities. So in Peru and Uganda, um, vector-borne diseases were considered uh, extremely important. And these are diseases that are carried by um, any kind of vector, a mosquito, a tick, etc. So things like malaria, dengue. Now obviously this was one particular set of, um, of health outcomes that wasn't really a big factor in the Arctic. So that's one that's unique to the Amazon and to, um, and to Uganda. The second area of health that was important to all three communities was food security or malnutrition. In Peru and Uganda, this is, this is malnutrition, in some cases to the point of, 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 of death or mortality or actually losing children. In the Arctic, it's more an issue of having access to high quality nutritious food, but the idea of access to food was important to all three areas. And this is also linked in for all three areas to the idea of um, indigenous health, so their understanding of traditional foods, the transition in all areas between traditional foods that they've, they've eaten normally, and modern foods. So all three communities or all three regions are going through this really, really important transition between what they've eaten in the past and what they're now having access to. And that has implications for people's health. And it was identified by all three areas as important. And the third was what we call water security. In Peru and in Uganda, this is basically the quality of the water. So people are getting sick with things like diarrhea and vomiting. Um, parasites, worms, etc. And in the Arctic, they're also concerned about the quality access to good, clean water. So in a sense, we're, 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 we're doing climate change research, but we're sort of setting the word climate change to the side for a minute and saying in order to understand the impacts of climate change, which is a global process, we need to understand how people interact with their local environments. And once we do that, we can begin to think about if the climate changes, how will people adapt? So we're interested in how people are interacting with their environment now, really as a proxy to start to think about what adaptive capacity or what mechanisms do they have within their communities and within these societies to adapt to changes in the future. Just to give you a couple examples, a traditional or top-down research on climate change might ask the question, if the temperature changes by two degrees, what will the, what will be the impact on the Inuit people? The question we will ask is, well, maybe it's not a temperature change of two degrees that matters to the Inuit. What we want to find out is maybe it's something really tiny, like a delay in the freeze-up of the ice of even a week. Or maybe it's a change in wind direction. 
So we'll find out what are the environmental triggers or what is the variation or the variables that matter to the people? What are people most vulnerable to? And then we can go back to the climate change modeling research and say, well, what does that modeling say about breakup in ice and change in wind direction? Because maybe that's what matters most to the people on the ground.